Welcome back to another episode of the Aussie Gamers Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Snoogs, and joining me on deck tonight are my ever vigilant co host, co host, co host, Reggio. Hey, mate. Lucas is joining us tonight because he's off doing what Lucas does. Whatever that well, mate, is. It's up, it's, it's up to you to help uh, get me through the news and gaming stories from the week. <laughs> so, everyone that's listening along, sit back, relax, and get ready for episode 320. Oh, this is the Aussie Gamers Experience Podcast, the show with irreverent live listeners, raging hosts, and eventually conversation about the best and the worst of the video games industry. So all that you're required to do now is to pick up your poison of choice, expect the best, but prepare for the worst, and above all, enjoy the show. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. Before we get started, Grigio, how are you, mates? Thanks for joining me. Good, man. You, you said on. help you get through the news and games this week. Like, like it's going to be a chore. Like, there, there's something that's not... There's... I, 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 do, I do put that on there. It's not really a chore. It's more mm. to get through them, you know, before the recording runs out. Because, <laughs> we, we, you, know, you know, both of us can have a tendency to... To dribble somewhat. Never any story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that could happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure that we can help each other there. We tend to enable uh, each other, if anything. No, I, re- I reckon in, in person we're a lot worse. We kind of ra- rail it in a long year. G'day everyone, editing Lucas here. Just wanting to jump in nice and early to say what a load of shit. I edit out a lot of garbage out of these shows. <laughs> There's a lot of waffling still going on, guys. Enjoy the show. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see how we go. And on that note, won't you thank everyone that's in the chat? <laughs> I will thank everyone that's in the chat because we've got Azrael, Radicus, and The Wraith who are joining us live. Uh, the Wraith is already putting some reface stuff on there, and I'm concerned because I now have a pine- pineapple pen. All right, well, let's jump into the show. We've got a bit in store for everyone this week, including details on the Uncharted movie. Well, pictures, anyway. Uh, some more breakdown on the Epic versus Apple saga that is going on at the moment. Doom's DLC run, PS5 is in the wild, late station, and we've got a few other bits and pieces to talk through as well. So let's get into it with This Week in Gaming. This Week in Gaming, we're talking before the show because we've just found this one and thought we'd throw it in. Grand Theft Auto 3 was released. I've got details of release released on the PlayStation 2. I'm assuming mm. it was on the Xbox, but I can't remember. When did the original Xbox come out? Do you remember off the top of your head? Mm, not off the top of my head. I was not still... I think I was still in high school. No. Yes. I think I was still in Maybe. high school. So All right. someone said 2001. 2001? That, well, this that, was October 2001, Grand Theft Auto 3. Published by Rockstar and developed by DMA Design Limited. Grand Theft Auto 3 was the first one that was first person shooter, wasn't it? Uh, uh, third yes. Person, sorry. Yeah. It's well, a th- third person shooter, yeah. Third person. Like 3D ish, not the top down, run over the chanting people versions of one and two. <laughs> <laughs> It kind of, uh, it, it was the Grand Theft Auto that divided parents everywhere and also really cemented, I suppose, Rockstar and the Grand Theft Auto franchise, wasn't it? Really, it kind of where it exploded, I suppose. Well, I guess it thrust it into a, a, a larger audience, uh, made it more accessible in the sense of there was more people who were going to play it, especially mm. being that it came out on console as well as, see, previously, uh, oh, no, because there were some original OG PlayStation versions like uh, yep. Grand Theft the Auto. Top. Grand Theft so, Auto and... So that's not um, true either. London um, stories. But I guess, yeah, I guess the, the, the format, the, the third-person shooter, the open world, that makes it slightly more appealing and accessible to more people than the top-down mm-hmm. version that was available beforehand. Uh, well, it's uh, I, I spent many, many hours in it. 
and uh, it was lots of fun. And the next Grand Theft Auto, I'm sure I'll be spending many, many more. So, yes. used to that. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump straight into some game talk. I've actually played more than one game this week. Hey. hey. That one game that I always play, I have played a lot of it again because it is my switch off. I enjoy streaming it and having a bit of fun with it. Of course, it's the Division 2. This week, I have completed the 100 levels of the Battle Pass. I've started uh, running through the Summit, which is the 100 levels, uh, just wave defence, I suppose, is the easiest way to do it. It's literally a a run up a... um, uh, high rise building, taking your enemies as you go, cleaning it out. I'm up to level 50 now. It's got it takes it takes some time, you know, <laughs> it's not not a quick one nighter thing. It's yep. um, it, it it takes a bit of time. I think I I played for for two hours last night and I did 20 levels, so it gives you a bit of an, a bit of an idea. It, uh, it does does take its time, not and like I'm not rushing it. I'm doing it solo as well, I'm sure, with a team. We'd probably crank through them a bit quicker, but I've got a complete skill set up and I've got a, I'd say probably a hybrid setup. Um, it's got a lot of, it doesn't have much in the way of a, uh, a, a tankiness build to it because it's still more focused on the DPS, but it's got a lot of armor regen on it. So uh, yep. while I'm, every time I'm killing someone, I'm pulling armor back. So it kind of balances itself out. And I've started building a completely glass cannon build as well, which is absolutely insane. But when you're playing one out, the glass cannon doesn't really, you know, you you need that team there. You need someone that's going to be able to put a healer. And yes, Raytheon, I'm sure Tasmanians would use that sort of build. Uh, Port Royale 4 is another one that I've been playing on PC. Have you ever played these Port Royale games? Port Royale. Yes. Now, if I had to have a guess of what it is, because I mean, my answer is no. Okay. <laughs> um, what, um, what would you guess? See, when someone uses the phrase Port Royale, I think of mm-hmm. pirates because of Port Royal. Yeah, yeah. That's so. So is this is this what we're talking about, or is this a a battle royale game that's you know no. portal based? <laughs> oh shit! That that, that would actually I, I be might, I awesome. might actually really awesome. Game, I <laughs> that kind of throws me right off. I'm like, shit! Is there one of them? <laughs> uh, no, this is the, yeah, pir- pirates. It's uh, it's it's based in the Caribbean. Uh, it's you've got like Tortuga, um, Port of France. Uh, you know those sort of old yep. ports that are, that were around the Caribbean at the time. Yep. Uh, and it's a kind of a well. It, at its core, it's a, a trading game where, where you're sort of you building your cities, but you're also building your fleet and trading. You know, you, you go, go to a certain uh, city and pick up grain or beer and take that to someone else who needs it and then sell it. And you're sort of working out, you know, stock levels. You're working okay. out buy low, sell high and, so and trying to work out. Strategy game or? Yeah, strategy game is probably the easiest way to put it. So you, you've obviously you've got you've got to work out to stay away from pirates. Uh, you can be a bit of a pirate yourself by taking on certain things uh, or, or certain uh, ships later on. But you've also got to watch out because you can only you can only find out whether it's a, a trade ship or a uh, a gunner once you get close enough to actually uh, visually see it. Right. And it just kind of it kind of it builds on all that. And yep. it's actually as a sort of game that, you know, being that it's kind of like a, like an RTS type thing. Yeah, it yep. it takes a long time to get into, but once you start getting into it and flowing through it, it's just it's really in depth and really engaging how it works. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures of it now. It, it, so it's a bit it's a bit like Civilization, a bit kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very very similar to sort of stuff. Uh, cool. and it looks it looks absolutely stunning. Like it's gorgeous. Yeah, it does. It uh, looks very pretty. But it's yeah. the Caribbean, so and the Caribbean always looks pretty. This is true. It's uh it's it's gorgeous stuff. Uh mate, you've been playing the Turing test. I have. Yeah, I have not played this for a long time. So much so that I think I've only only played a little bit of it. Yeah, so it, it came out on Game Pass, um, I think 
just recently. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I I saw it. I sort of was just perusing Game Pass and um, saw it, and I had a look, and I went, "Oh, that looks very Portal esque." So, hey, what the heck? So I like Portal. Uh, so I gave it, it a crack. Um, it's it's a it's a logic puzzle physics game like like Portal. Only uh, instead of shooting portals, you use a a, a another non lethal gun to collect energy orbs and use them to open up circuits, power circuits that you then can open doors with, and and lifts and stuff like that. And um, you've got to try and navigate your way through these mazes. And the whole premise of the whole thing is that the the maze is in effect a Turing test. For those that don't know what a Turing test is, the Turing test is a test designed to tell the difference between a human and an AI. So mm-hmm. uh, an AI should always fail the Turing test and actually it's not possible for it to imitate a human being. It should. <laughs> and look, it if you've watched, there's a movie called The Imitation Game, which is about the Alan Turing, who's the guy that was one of the founders of the concept of like he made one of the first learning computers and 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 and, and did the basis of like the rudimentary ideas of AI and and um, and learning computers and stuff like that. Um, if you've seen that movie, um, you 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 it's almost a bit of a love letter to Alan Turing. Um, when you dig into all the little bits and pieces that are spread throughout the game, um, which I, I, I really enjoyed because I really liked the movie. Uh, I think Alan Turing is a an awesome figure of history, um, very poorly treated in history, unfortunately. Uh, but you should watch the movie and you'll understand. Uh, he's the guy that cracked the Enigma code during World War II. Um, mm-hmm. So... Uh, look, he it, look. It, it's it's a it's a great game. Uh, it's not very long. Uh, it has seventy puzzles. Um, it took me about well seventy seven technically. There's seventy levels, um, and seven of those levels have like a bonus area. Uh, so it took me about four four and a half hours to knock out the the main story, which is the main seventy levels, and then it probably took me about another hour to do the last seven. Um, which were obviously slightly more advanced. I don't. I didn't find the the puzzles overly taxing either. So, like, they're not well, massive. You're not, you're not an AI, brain so scratcher. You right. Well, yes. <laughs> they, they they weren't they weren't massive brain scratches. I think the the hardest part actually is the learning curve. A bit like the how the witness doesn't hold your hand when it's teaching you the puzzles. It just expects that you'll you'll piece it together by doing more and more puzzles. Um, this was the same thing. I found the ones that were actually the hardest to work out were the ones where they introduced a new mechanic. And those were the ones that mm. usually you were trying all the things you already knew and then all of a sudden you're like, uh, hang on. Oh. They've oh, in, they've yeah. obviously introduced something new because this isn't work none nothing that I'm doing is working. Sort of thing. Um so so look that that's look it's like I said, it's not it's not overly taxing, so it's quite enjoyable to play. The story itself, not a super original concept. It it does have a very portal vibe, and you kind of, as your character, you're talking to this AI the entire time, and you all the entire time you're feeling very disconcerted because you're like, yeah, I generally know how this ends, and it it clearly is setting you up to make a decision at the end of the game. I like how that decision plays out in the end. It's a mm-hmm. very interesting way of doing it and i enjoyed it and i found i found it quite quite emotive in in a way how it plays out oh well, that's, but, that's um, always good or something like yeah that, I, you know, I i definitely it definitely had a reaction talk. from it like it wasn't a, yeah. a major it wasn't like i was bawling out my eyes out on the floor but it, it was definitely like a oh 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 one of those moments yeah, which is which I always find refreshing in a game. If a game can stop and make me go, ah, oh, go, ah, oh, that okay, that I I really enjoy those moments. Yeah, if you've got Game Pass, like I said, it's definitely worth a play, especially if you like those sort of physics-based puzzle games. Uh, I, I I definitely enjoy them. I love them. I, like I said, I love Portal. Uh, this game 
was an absolute joy to play. Uh, the only downside gameplay wise was I found the loading times in between levels and, and sections they were a bit jarring because I'm just I guess we're kind of spoiled these days where loading is kind of invisible in games a yeah, lot these yeah. days. And what you don't generally sort of be walking from one area to another and then stop and then have a little clock tick over and then it's like, all right, now you can go. <laughs> like, yep. And also I, I had a, a slight glitch, but this is obviously it was a PC game before it was, it's, it's creative. For, they've created a version for console. Um, one of the prompts actually still came up with the letter E key. And I was like, huh. I don't have an E button. Which, which, which one's the E key? And and as soon as I sort of turned away from the item and went back, it went back to, oh, you want the X button. I was like, oh, okay. Ah, okay. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, awesome. So that's that's on Game Pass now, is it? Yeah, it's on Game Pass. Sweet. So you can uh, we can have a look at that, people. The next one from me, mate, Doom Eternals DLC, The Ancient Gods. Yeah. How is it? Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, you know, I I got through Doom, uh, and I say I got through Doom because there was a lot of mechanics in Doom that I wasn't overly a fan of. Uh, this jumping and floating being part of it, you know, that just mm-hmm. it took it away yep. from what Doom what Doom felt like to me. It it, uh, it was it was not fun. Yeah, I found I lost more life doing those jumping and gliding puzzles than I did just killing hordes of animal oh, creatures. E- exactly. Uh, but <laughs> so frustrating. It, oh, and, and I reckon that it was probably five or six to one was my death count ratio as opposed to... <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Killed by enemies once for every six fall off the world. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> so there was, there, there was that, but... Uh, so, so with, with that in mind, I I didn't go back and play Doom again. You know, uh, I I played it, I enjoyed it, and it was Doom. It was it was done and dusted. The ancient gods. You start the ancient gods. Luckily, Doom guy is still all uh, fully upgraded. So it's not like one of these sessions where you go in, you got to start again. You know, oh, they've you know something's happened. You lose all your armor or whatever. Uh, no, that's that's not like that. It uh, just kind of throws you in and goes, well, you finished the game. Um, good luck. Clearly, you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it, it kind of feels as though ID Software have gone and said, well, let's see how many things we can fit on the screen before killing the game. Let's oh, You, you want to fight a Marauder? You think a Marauder is an easy fight? Try two of the fuckers. <laughs> now... Oh, it's it's absolutely insane. Yep. It just comes out and it wants to beat the living crap out of you. Uh, in, in Doom, you know, you're one of the encounter mm. encounters, right? Say say a boss fight encounter in in Doom Eternal, and it and it's it's lasting three to five minutes, right? Yep, and you're done. A standard encounter where you just come into a room can last ten minutes plus. And it oh, is yeah. exhausting <laughs> because you're you've it's what well, it's doom. You know it, it is yep. it is doom at its core. There is so much where you've just got to be moving. You've got to be watching everything. You've got so many different types of enemies that will spawn in to destroy you. Yep, and it is so much fun. <laughs> 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 As taxing and as stressful, and it is, you know, that there was times when I've just gone, okay, I've done one encounter. <sighs> All right, let's just take a step back for a minute, go and have a drink of <laughs> water, just chill out. It, it was absolutely insane. It does not, it does not let up. It, it really is a core sort of Doom experience. If you're a Doom fan, you know, definitely check it out. It's it's a lot of fun. I'm going to restart it and and stream it because I reckon it'll be fun with a few people watching and watching me swear and carry on at it. So yeah, it's good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's out now. It is a DLC. Uh, it's paid add on. If you've got the ultimate edition, uh, I don't know if it's free on Game Pass because I've got it on PS4. Uh, so I haven't actually checked if the DLCs. 
free. I don't think it would be. Well, it might be now because of mm -hmm. the whole ownership thing, but who knows? Go and have a check and enjoy it if you dare. My last game for this week, see, I played four. Look at Miko. Uh, it's a bit of a change of pace. <clears throat> it's a game on the Switch. It is an indie title. Uh, it's developed by a group of people called the Quantum Astrophysicists Guild. Now, okay. the name in itself should give you a bit of an idea. You know, th these guys have sent me uh, a code. Mm -hmm. They've they've come in and watched uh, a few of my streams and have sent me codes via my stream and asked me to stream their games and let them know what I think and, and all that sort of jazz, which is absolutely awesome. Yep. So I've streamed a couple of their other games, uh, which were these uh, sort of 2D uh, line wire type titles, uh, yep. very physics based. And, you know, they, they've got little, like, a few of their other games, they've got, little, they've got these little quirky things about them, as a lot of uh, indie titles do. Now, this last one is called Fractor or Fracture, Fractor. On, it's on the Switch. Yep. Uh, just released on the Switch a couple of days ago. I've, uh, I've been playing uh, a few hours of it now. Unfortunately, my Switch is not set up to, to stream, otherwise I'd be doing it. But this game is a – it's got 3D elements, but it kind of you, – you kind of give that isometric view over yep. it, and you've got a little 3D person that, that walks around. Now, this game uses uh, light. So it's black and white. It uses the fractor oh, – yeah, fract fracturing of light. Right. And what it does, it's a little puzzler, and you've got to get through all of these levels and get back versions of yourself. Oh, it's got a lot of poetry that goes with it. Oh, I can't really explain, but they're kind of they're, they're these versions of yourself that when you look into this mirror at the beginning of the game, you're looking yep. in this mirror and this version of yourself comes up, and then it flashes white and all these versions of yourself which are just pure light escape from the mirror so you're going through the world collecting them and picking yep. and like getting them back now that is done by this this puzzle mechanic where you've got to use light to to unlock these puzzles now it's the puzzles themselves uh, are not overly complex so sorry uh, is it is it black and white yes Yes. Okay. I'm looking at the pictures of it now. So, so oh, okay. I understand yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's, yeah, so right. it's black, black and white. So the, the puzzles themselves aren't aren't complex to do it, but you've also got to watch out for these other creatures that live in the darkness. So because yep. you yourself are light and emitting light, you've got to sneak past. You've got to go around and try and block your light from where these things are, so they can't see you. Yeah, you've right. then also got to try and use light. So. They can, like if you if you open up a light beam, they can't walk through it. Yep. If you time it right, you will actually kill them. So if you right. if you open it up when they're walking past the front of it, it'll just you know destroy them. They get they they do their little death sequence and go away. Yep. And yeah, you just kind of go along and and do in your merry little way. Not overly taxing, like I said, but it has got me a couple of times. Yep. When it's just been a, one of those timing things and it's sort of like, okay, that didn't work. Let's try this way to do it. Yep. But overall, it is an awesome little title. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, it, it's very cool. I'm not sure how much it is on the Switch, but it's it's available now. And so I think, yeah, I, I think anyone that's got a Switch that likes those kind of quirky titles, at least go and have a look at it. I'll hof hopefully. You know, I'm still trying to work out how to get my Switch to work with my capture card properly. It doesn't really like it for some reason, but uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do about getting some video up just to see what it's like and at least show it off a little bit. All right, there's some, uh, there's some very confusing images going up in the chat. <laughs> some very strange video. Uh, they're not playing on my end, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'll, I'll watch them later. Uh, any other games for yourself, mate, or any questions? No, not really. Um, no. No, no, like, I've just played a lot of Minecraft. Other than that, it's been Turing and Minecraft. All right, mate. Well, let's jump into some news. Uh, not a lot of news this week. I was I was jumping around back and forth uh, looking for a few bits of news, and I couldn't, couldn't really find anything that, that stood out 
that I wanted to talk about, you know. Yep. Uh, so I, I grabbed a couple of things that uh, I thought we could we could have a bit of a discussion on. The yep. first thing, uh, have you seen the images that have come out from the Uncharted movie set? No. No. Are good? Yes. No, I've had my head in the head in the sand this week, my friend. No. Oh. All right. Well, we have got Tom Holland as Nathan Drake has released an image of himself in full getup. There is also a, a, a photo going around of, I've actually gone completely blank, the guy that does the voice for Nathan Drake. That'd be Nolan North. Which I really should know, and it's terrible that it has left, but him staring lovingly at Tom Holland while he's dressed up as Nathan Drake. So it's, you, you've got to, like, it's one of those memes comes up where, you, you know, you've got to find a man who looks at you the way that Nate looks at Nate. So, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, it's looking, it's actually looking really good. It kind of puts a bit of a younger spin on Nate earlier on in his sort of career. Look, I think, I think this is definitely going to be a make or break decision for them. Um, like, no, no dissing Tom Holland. He's a great actor, but there's some big shoes to fill, man. Like they are, but I, you know, I think Tom Holland's he, he's done Spider Man justice. Uh, and so his relationship with Sony, I think, you know, that's kind of that's sort of shown in the way that they've they've treated his Spider Man. I know they've had input from Marvel, but originally when he came on, it was a uh, it was a Sony thing. So I, I think Tom Holland himself, it'll be good to see him act, you know, as someone in their twenties and as a teenager for one. And yeah, be good to to go forward. The other image that's out doing the rounds is good old Mark Wahlberg. Yes. So Mark Wahlberg is playing Sully. Right. And there's a bit of an image floating around of Mark Wahlberg with a absolutely dirty Sully Mo. <laughs> it it very much it can I think it can work. So who who knows? Like it's uh it seems to be shaping up to be pretty good. Uh, obviously that they're, they're filming it, it's in production. It's um who knows? Hopefully this will be a uh a, a video game movie adaption that will actually be good. And you know what? I've actually just had a memory pop in my head because this last week I've been I've been been doing some some time around the Amazon Prime streaming, right? Yep. Talking about video game movies. Do you remember Blood Rain? Yes. God, that's hope. The movie or the game? Oh. <laughs> well, but well, the the movie itself. So there's which, I, I don't know. Which how would you prefer to sit through? Just out of curiosity. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, oh, at least come on! There's, there's boobs in the movie. <laughs> I was gonna say, Christina Logan's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the, I I saw the movie and I started watching it, and I'm like, I owned this. Why did I own this movie? <laughs> I can tell you why you own this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Two reasons. Yeah, that's fair it's, it's fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't blow. I'm sitting there. I, could, I couldn't get through it. I just went, yeah, I'll just put that aside. I'll wait for that. I don't, I'm not going to watch that now. Uh, all right, next bit of news. Uh, we've talked over the last few months about the ongoing Epic versus Apple situation that's going on. Of course, if anyone has had their head in the sand, then we all know that uh, – Apple kicked Epic off the Apple Store, or I kicked Fortnite off it, because Epic went around Apple's system where Apple charges 30% of everything that's purchased through the store to buy credit directly for Fortnite, directly off Epic, right? Yep. So Epic Games has fired back against Apple yet again, because this is becoming schoolyard shit, tit for tat. Uh, saying the iPhone maker has no rights to the fruits of Epic's labor. Now, Apple has come out and said, you know, what Epic has done is illegal. They're trying to sue them for breach of contract. And they're also, uh, you know, it's it's become sort of a bit of a personal war between the two of them with Apple's latest stance is at, you know, at all times, Apple's conduct was reasonable and its actions were undertaken in good faith to advance legitimate business interests and had the effect of promoting, encouraging, and increasing competition. Epic's flavorant disregard for its contractual commitments and other misconducts has caused significant harm to Apple. Yeah, it's a drop in your ocean, mate. Don't, I don't think there's a problem right I there. can see Apple's really reeling from that body shot. 
I know, I know. Uh, the the way that this is put across, I'll I'll I'll, I'll read it first, and then we'll get to it. All right. The company couldn't steal proceeds from the sales of its own created efforts and did not interfere with any prospective economic advantage Apple sought to gain from Fortnite users separate and apart from their interest in Fortnite. Apple's repeated assertions of theft boil down to the extraordinary assertion that Epic's collection of payments by players of Epic's game to enjoy the work of Epic's artists, designers and engineers is the taking of something that belongs to Apple. The case should go to jury to decide and suggesting a trial frame of summer 2021. It is important enough to understand what real people think. Do these security issues concern people or not? My reading of that, and I'll I'll hear yours as well, is Epic's just, it's just kind of getting to this blurry thing where it all comes back to Epic doesn't want to pay 30%. Yep. And they're claiming that the only reason that Apple wants to wants to take 30% is because they want to make money off someone off another business's crea- creativity or creative process or you know what Epic has made Apple wants to make money off. Uh, look, I <laughs> I think it's even more basic than that. It's simply Apple are charging thirty percent because they can. Mm-hmm. That's it's not. I don't even think it's about. I mean, they're making it that Apple's trying to you know earn off their hard work, but quite frankly, Apple are a monopoly. If you want your game on okay. their service, you've got to pay the price. And if Indeed. they're charging thirty percent, that's the cost of doing getting on there. Mm-hmm. You work out whether the platform is going to make you enough money where you can you can write off thirty percent of it. If it's not, that's, then leave. <laughs> that's exactly right. And guess and, what? And if everyone starts doing that, all of a sudden Apple will go, "Huh, maybe we probably shouldn't charge thirty percent." No, and that's pretty much that's that's how capitalism works. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Martikins in the chat as well. And Martikins is put on there. Every platform charges thirty percent. Yeah, pretty much. I've seen that. That's that's pretty much the number to put your to put your title on a on a platform. You know, bar I think Steam and Epic, whatever their value is. I think Steam's at twenty percent and Epic's at twelve, or something along those lines. But from what I understand, PlayStation and Xbox are both thirty percent. Google was thirty percent. It's a, it really is a big number though. But to Epic, to Epic, it shouldn't be. It, it might be, but it's the chunk it's of the pie the you're buying. It's, yeah, it's, right, it's the number. Right, you're paying thirty percent to get the potential customer base of all of Apple. Mm-hmm. That's what you're paying for. Now, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you can turn around and say Apple are greedy for charging thirty percent, or you can have the argument that that's the standard price. Like that's one argument, but <laughs> Epic. Were the ones that tried to circumnavigate this so they could get a larger <laughs> cut of that pie. Yes. To say they're anything but also greedy is a fallacy. So they're not yeah. that hard done by. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so really, they the, take it to court, hash it out, leave us the fuck out of it, and whatever yeah. the wherever the shit lands, you either accept the thirty percent or you fuck off and just don't worry about your customer base in Apple. Yeah, pretty much. Just leave Apple to its own devices. All right. The next bit of news. We saw the PlayStation teardown the other week. And in the teardown, we saw that the side plates on the PS5 come off reasonably easily. They come off with a bit of a click, as we saw in the video. Uh, we didn't see how or, or, or what they do or if it was something that could be taken off relatively quickly by users and constantly done but that hasn't stopped a company coming out and offering the side panels for the ps5 have you seen this no no i haven't but no nothing new nothing new for creating a panel for a ps (laughs) yes (laughs) uh these are so these are full side panels that you can click on and off uh they come in uh there's a few colors going around at the moment which is uh, there's like a camo version, a um, uh, a blue, a chrome, a red, 
and I think a black version as well. And they're designed to completely, you know, take place of the white ones. It is called PlateStation. Right. They have no affiliation with PlayStation. They are not an approved accessory manufacturer. So they're pretty much just a third-party company. They're not even they're not, not affiliated anyway. But you can get them for the, the standard or the digital edition, a couple of different colours to start off with. Mardikins wants the red ones. I actually like the chrome, although I, I like the white, just the way that it looks as well, although the chrome the sort of does, looks pretty the cool. Silver, the silver does look pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the black also looks really cool. I like the black. Yeah, the black actually comes out really well with the with the, the blue lighting blue. on the PS5. Yeah. 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 I mean, it so goes back to the standard PS black thing, but hmm. which we've come accustomed to in the last couple of generations. But yeah. indeed, but uh, look, it's it's there. It looks like it's a bit of fun, and the PS fives are out in the wild, which is my next bit of news. So the PlayStation fives have started to get into the hands of reviewers. I think mainly in the US. I've heard of some of the the bigger guys in Australia. I believe have them or have them coming uh so we'll know more about that over the next little while but uh yeah they're starting to come out and so far all we've really seen is an unboxing of the controller and images of the box itself and the box itself shows like this is i think people are starved of what they can show about it because they're they're excited that the bottom of the box shows you how to transfer data from the ps4 to the ps5 Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, I'm. Hmm. It's one. It's one of those things that the the PlayStation Five has been very slow to release information. And on Friday, we got a few things from uh, a few people around the place that they'd actually got theirs. And so I dare say, over over the coming week, we'll we'll see more because we're only about two and a bit weeks away from from release. And we're still in the middle of a desert with nothing but cups of piss to drink. Pretty much. God damn. <laughs> Fuck you, PlayStation. <laughs> uh, last bit of news. Yep. It kind of revolves around another monopoly. And the reason this come up is because uh, this has been bouncing around a little bit in our chat on Discord of late. And that is the whole Facebook and Oculus things. Mm-hmm. So for those that don't know, Oculus was actually bought out by Facebook a little while ago, and they've kind of integrated the two brands within each other. The problem is, is that if you want to keep using your virtual reality headset on games, you need to have a Facebook account. So this is for the Oculus headsets. You need to have a Facebook account that's active and is in good stead. So it's not one that's, you know, been banned or, you know, whatever, but you've got to have an account there just to use the virtual reality headset. If you, you know, there's there's been a lot of issue with trying people trying to link their accounts to it and just bricking the headset. So it's been an absolute nightmare uh, just of recent times. Now, the, the older headsets are currently fine with just using your old Oculus account. A new headset, you need to have a Facebook account with it as well. I know a lot of people, you know, people are probably thinking, no, nah, it's just a Facebook account. Just just have it. The big thing is, is that I'm starting to see a lot of people within the gaming sphere are starting to deactivate their, their Facebook accounts or they don't want to link their Facebook stuff with their gaming stuff. You know, it's kind of like, especially those that are, you know, streamers or, or, or that are online a lot because, you know, the, your Facebook account's a personal account Yep. for a lot of people and you don't want to link the two. So currently the, the older Oculus headsets, they have until 2023 before a new rule will kick in that you need a Facebook account for all the company's VR hardware. Now, this is where it gets a little bit hazy. If... You link your Facebook account and then decide to delete your Facebook account, you know, down the track, you will get a pop-up that says deleting your Facebook account will also delete your Oculus information. This includes your app purchases and achievements. You will no longer be able to return any apps and will lose any existing store credit. Oh, well. 
just delete everything off my Facebook account and go let it gather dust. (laughs) (laughs) That's one thing to do. Uh, (laughs) Indeed. Uh, To be fair, mine collects a lot of dust anyway, so. Yeah, I I think uh, Facebook has died for for a lot of people of recent times. It's sort of on the decline. Uh, I don't think it's going the way of MySpace, but it's it's definitely slowing down uh, with a lot of people. What, what do you think about it actually actually being a requirement, though? Okay, it's it's Look, one of those things where it's, it's you know, the, uh, the company owns Oculus. Facebook owns Oculus. So yeah, but it, like, it's kind of a... I have yeah, to... Well, like, mine, so you have but to. to play my Xbox, I have to have a... Uh, uh, an xbox live account mm-hmm. like i don't i don't i don't really foresee how that's any different like if you're really concerned about your privacy just create a second facebook account like yeah for your gaming space um yeah well that that's what a lot of people are complaining about because it's a uh, it's a gaming con uh, well it's a, it's a gaming device yep. that you need to have a social media account linked to it like you have to have a social media account yeah, it. but look, it's. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's a bigger issue as people making out to be. I think it's one of those things where people are balking at it because it's different, and and no one likes to be told what they have to do. And as soon as you tell them they have to do something, they're like, well, no, no, don't. No, fuck you. I'm not going to use it. And then a week <laughs> later, they're they're fucking they're jerking off with their VR headset on. Um, mm-hmm. I I think there's two things that'll come about it. But you'll you'll have those people that literally will just balk and go, fuck this shit. I'm out. And and there's there's no changing that. That's that's going to happen. You'll have those yep. people that then balk, and then like I said, they'll be they'll be fine in a week's time. I just think that VR is one of those technologies that struggles to be in any kind of medium or space with any sort of so what I'm looking for integrity. It's not integrity. Drawing a blank. I can't think of the word I'm want, looking for, but. It's it's a credibility, right? In, yeah, okay. in any space that require where it has even in the gaming space, like it's still even after all this time, PlayStation VR is more of a gimmick than anything else. Oh, and, yeah, and 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 the Oculus is the same thing. Like you're trying to create, it's trying to find a meaningful space in the world, and it's struggling with any sort of real credibility and any real meat to it. Mm-hmm. And all this, I think, is set to do is just render it back into that, like, whatever gains they've made in the like, last five or six years is going gonna, is gonna to slightly go backwards in this move. It, will, it might eventually push it forward. And I think it's, it, it's, the technology itself is probably in good hands in, say, Facebook because they will market it in as many possible ways as possible. Yep. Um, and they will, I will, they will take that technology and churn it and crank it, and it, it'll find spaces. Whether it finds any real credibility in the gaming sphere, other than just being a gimmicky thing to do, other, while the rest of us play normally. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it, like I said, I, I've I've always said this. I'm like I've I've never been a big fan of VR because I've always just seen it as that's all it is. It's just a gimmick. That's all it's ever used for. It ca- comes in waves and fluxes, and it's in fashion. It's out of fashion, and anyway, that's that's just my opinion. I think it's yeah, like three D TVs um, are another thing. Like everyone yeah. raved about three D TVs, and I was like, yeah, you have that. That's that's not going to last. And sure enough, see, there's there's certain <laughs> things with with VR that that work, yep. and the way that they work, and they need to be embraced by the companies that are that are doing it mm-hmm. to 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 really get stuck into it the um well, f- well for instance grand uh, grand turismo vr mm. that is insane mm-hmm. for, for me to be able to jump on and do 10 laps of mount panorama and i get off it and i'm sweating i'm sore because my body just goes into you're in a race car. Yep. You need to, you know, you you need to brace for this for this upcoming corner, and you know, because I know, I know the track as well, so I know how it feels to go around it. Yep, I may have gone around at some speed, but you know, it, 
I, I know where it where it goes and and you know how steep it is and everything like that. So it's it's one of those things that no matter where you race, it's y- your body you know makes up the g forces for it. Yeah. Same as Radicus is just putting their Star Wars squadrons, another one. But one thing with Gran Turismo, you can't play multiplayer in VR. Now, yes. yep. why? Yep. You know, that's, and, that's and something the other thing that is- should just be a given. Like, yeah, don't put me with people that are playing the right, because, you know, the difference in my speeds between VR and non VR are uh, in VR, I'm actually you know, a second or two quicker. Yep. So I get, don't put me with people that don't have VR. I understand that. But if I want to race someone else that's got virtual reality, then let me. If I want to play, you know, squadrons with someone, then let me. Yeah. So it's... I think, yeah, I think I, the, other, the other problem I have with it is, yeah, I, I, don't get me wrong, I love Gran Turismo VR. I think it's great. Uh, every time I've played it, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. But I like, wow, that was cool. That was a nice nostalgic trip down playing Gran Turismo 2, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, the, and the, that's a problem. There, there's a massive gap between what I can play on my console, what you can play on your PC, and what you play on a VR. And that gap is always going to be there. It doesn't matter how good VR gets, it's always going to be behind that shit. And my, mm-hmm. as Martin says, you can play eye racing with three screens and a cockpit, and you get the same feel because your field of view is still taken up, but the resolution from three screens is well, well exceeding what you yeah. do with a pair yeah. of glasses, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I, th- I think, and that's and that's the problem. Like that's that's where the credibility issue comes in. Is and if, even if you've got like all the money in the world, right? You can buy that and play Gran Turismo in a full cockpit that moves you around and all that jazz, or you can stick those massive three screens on there and move around. And like I said, you're almost you essentially you're achieving the same thing. Thing. Yeah, it's just yeah, that yeah. one gives you more fidelity, more real. And to be fair, if it was legitimate, why why are Formula One drivers training on simulators with big screens and not yeah, not goggles? VR. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Sorry. Oh, well, that's good. And I like I like the thoughts. I like the feedback. Yeah. Anyone that's listening along, jump into our Discord channel and, and jump in and join the conversation. Should be a bit of fun. Uh, I think that's it for news, mate. Yeah. Like I said, there, wasn't, there wasn't a great deal that I actually wanted to speak about this week because uh, no. it, was, it was nothing nothing overly that, that jumped out. I think we're having a bit of a lull before. We've got Watch Dogs coming out this week. Um, Cyberpunk's not far away. Cyberpunk's not far away. Oh, so excited. Uh, Halo- Whoa, not so fast there. While Cyberpunk, well, technically isn't that far away, they've delayed it again. So if you're looking forward to that and you haven't heard just yet, it has been delayed until the 10th of December. So it's been delayed another 21 days. Yeah, <laughs> just what we all wanted to hear. <sighs> Uh, it's Valhalla. Yeah, that's not far away. Um, I, w- hmm. I watched a video on Cyberpunk the other day. Dirt 5. There you go. Yep. Sorry, what did you watch a video on? I-, I watched a video on Cyberpunk the other day, and if yes. you I'll let you indulge me for just a minute, um, it was it was a bunch of things that, you know, one of those videos, things you must know before you play, you know, all that bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, they talked about cars and vehicles in the game. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would have liked that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There's some awesome guys in this game. Um, yeah, so excited. Mm. I, won't, I won't go into it because I know that, you know, Radix has to make some junk about Cyberpunk Forza 77 or some bullshit. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. And I don't need the never ending story fading in over this. So. <laughs> but yeah. uh, Radicus, I have not watched a um, the Watch Dogs video. But uh, I'll have to have a look if you posted one up. I haven't, I haven't watched a lot of Watch Dogs stuff because Watch Dogs isn't really on my radar. I'd, I'd like to have a go. I'd like to see how they've done it. Uh, but I haven't. I finished the first game, but I, I never finished the second one. So probably because at the time I was playing something else when it first came out. By the time I got it, no one else was playing and it was just other things were coming out after around it. So, yeah, 
I'll have to see what else. All right. Well, um, I think that's it, mate. That it? Bit of a short one this week. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's always good. I see mean, how long. Yeah. It's not always bad. No. Quick to the point. That's always a good one. A quick shout out to our live listeners. ATN's just jumped in and joined us. Azrael, Martikins, Radicus, and the Wraith. Thank you, as always, people. It's been great having you here. And uh, even though ATN's only jumped in at the end, thank you, everyone. Hope you're having fun. Uh, any other last words, mate? Um, be kind to each other? Yeah, always be kind to each other. Be good to your mother. Mm. For those that haven't yet, go and watch the new Jay Side Bob movie. Uh, oh, is that the um the reboot? The reboot? How yep. good how good was that? Oh, insane. I I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, because I, was... I actually I, th- I I I guess I went in expecting it could be quite bad. <laughs> <laughs> when and and then when I watched it, I was uh, well, yeah. And there was a couple of things where I was like, mm, there was a, there was a few moments that I thought were a little bit cringy, but there were some really genuinely great movie moments in that movie, like some oh, really nice. nice throwbacks, and then some really mm-hmm. there, there was some really good genuine heart moments in that movie yes. that I just thought that's yeah. If you're a dad, you need to watch that movie. Straight up, <laughs> it's really a dad movie. Oh, it is such a dad movie. It is oh, such a dad of, movie. Parts of that were actually hurt because I was laughing so much. Yeah, uh, it's good. All right, guys, Aussie Gamers TV and Snooker Vision, as always, over on Twitch. Come and say good day, and of course, Reggio XBL over on the Instas, as the cool kids are saying it. That's what they tell me anyway. <laughs> Totes. All right, well, let's let's wrap it up, shall we, mate? Thank you very much to everyone that's listening to the show, and especially those that are still listening this far along. Don't forget to continue any of the topics we've discussed over in our Discord channel or hit us up via our socials. While you're at it, hit up our website, www.theagexp.com. Links, as always, are in the podcast show notes and description. That's all from me. As always, I have been Snooks. And I have been Gregio. See you. Once again, we have reached the end of another week in gaming. And if you've listened all the way up until this point of the show, then there's a good chance that you're a perfect fit for the AGXP Discord channel. And you can join by using the links in the show description. Once you've joined, you will find yourself within a community of amazing people who are all interested in one thing, and that's gaming. You can also join in live while we record the show and have your say. Now, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you'll be notified when the next episode is available for your listening pleasure. Until next time, take care, be safe, and keep on gaming. (laughs) 